I don't know why so many Christians get into Halloween and celebrate witches and ghosts and ghouls and goblins and blood and guts and gore and all the things of darkness and not the things of light, which is what Halloween's supposed to be about. All Saints Day, All Hallows Eve. And we love to talk about darkness. We love stories of darkness. We love ghost stories and things like that. And so in this video, we're going to be telling a few stories of darkness, but also the stories of light and how light conquers darkness and how Jesus Christ is Lord and he always wins. One of these stories I don't think I've ever told publicly before. And so I'm going to be sharing it in this video right after this. Hello everyone and welcome to Catholic Truth. My name is Brian Mercier, President of Catholic Truth, and we want to help you to know your faith, love your Catholic faith, and to live it and be able to defend it. Anyone from anywhere at any time can come to know what the Catholic Church believes, why it can change your life, all right here. So let's begin. This first story happened many years ago and is a true story about when I was on a ministry team and we did different retreats and conferences and we were doing a weekend long retreat at a family conference in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And one girl that we prayed over was very much into witchcraft at the time and darkness and magic and things like that. And she always resisted. Every single year she resisted Christ. She stood on the outside. She wouldn't participate in the conference. And her mom brought her every year and she refused to participate. But this year she got into it a little bit more and she wanted to be prayed over. And so some of our ministry team members prayed over her and we believe that the demons absolutely came out of her. But um, some of them may have gone into one of our team members. And I noticed this because later on that day, I saw one of my team members slithering on his belly across a floor in this big gymnasium. Now, this boy was like 250 pounds. He was no small guy. And he was slithering on his belly out the door of the gym. I just I was like, why, why is he crawling on his belly? So I started calling out to him and he didn't answer me. And so I went after him and started walking a little faster. By this time, he was already out the door and he had taken a left down a dark corridor. I mean, it was getting darker and darker down that corridor and he's slithering down there on his belly. It was so weird and I've never seen anything like that before. I just watched Dumbfounded. I was like, and then it hit me, like I got this discernment of spirits, like I got this really sensation of a creepy dark spirit, and I knew that something demonic was happening. And I put it all together, and I went and told our ministry team leader, and she got a few of the big guys, and we all went down that corridor, picked him up, and carried him back, even though that's not what he wanted, and he was fighting it. When we got back to the gym, we put him down in the middle of the floor and started praying over him, and immediately he got paralyzed to the floor. And he was wriggling around a little bit, but he couldn't move. And so all our team members, I don't remember, maybe like 20 people started praying over him. And I remember this one girl came up to him and she put her hand on him and started trying to cast out demons and pray for him. And immediately it was like lightning. She got whoom, whapped to the floor, paralyzed to the floor right next to him. And another girl panicked and she went up and started trying to pray over her. And it was like lightning whoom, threw her on the floor. Three people were pinned to the floor, couldn't move totally paralyzed. All of a sudden, we're looking at each other like, what the heck is this? And so we started praying more and more, and a priest came, and he started praying too, but he, to be honest, he kind of looked a little freaked out. And after about five or ten minutes, he ended up leaving because we had all, I don't remember how many exactly, but I think four members pinned to the floor total, and all these other people were praying around it. And we prayed for like a half an hour. We were all praying in the name of Jesus. Our ministry team leader was trying to uh, do deliverance prayers in the name of Jesus. And we were just praying. And I had these voices saying, you're next, you're next, just talking on the outside of me, you know, and that sort of thing. And our ministry team leader told us not to touch any of them because the demons seemed to be transferring through touch. So we just started praying and praying and praying, like really heavy prayers, bombarding heaven. And once the priest left, I'm like, what? A, he's the priest. You know, what? A, <laughs> why would he leave of all people? Why would he just leave? And I was freaking out. And then eventually I had this calm and I had this peace. And after about a half an hour, 45 minutes, I remember having this vision or this picture of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't expecting it. I was just praying. But I I saw this light and I looked up and I, I saw this, the Blessed Virgin Mary descending through the roof and it was just like full of light. It was just so peaceful and so powerful. I was like, that's it. I was like, that's it. 
I was like, it's over. I was like, that's done. It's, it's over. We're done. I was like, I know that this is the end of it. And literally within 20 seconds, everybody stopped writhing. Everybody stopped. Everybody was just still. And the demon seemed to be gone. Like, it was crazy. Like, after that, right after that, I got this piece like, it's okay. And then it was. Like, Jesus Christ cast out those demons. <laughs> and the coolest thing is he sent Mary to do it. Like, it was probably his power through her. But that's just the thing. Like, imagine Jesus could snap his fingers and cast out the devil. But imagine the humiliation of the devil being beaten by the mother of Jesus. The same woman in the Bible, in Revelation 12, verse 1, Genesis 3, 15, the woman who he made war against conquered him by the power of Christ. Like, that's so cool. And we know that Mary's very powerful in exorcisms. We know this from the priests who do exorcisms. So these demons were cast out and these people were delivered, thanks be to God. One of the little girls uh, had a residual effect the following day, so we prayed over her and then after that she was fine too. And this other girl who was into witchcraft and stuff, she was never... Uh, bothered by that stuff again. In fact, she went on to become a Christian and <laughs> um, a more practicing Christian. She, she said she found Jesus and she said she wanted to do ministry and that sort of thing. So, you know, Jesus did win. Jesus does win. He won the day. He does win the day. And in fact, if you want a phenomenal uh, book on all of these type of stories, I would highly recommend the book An Exorcist Tells a Story about uh, an exorcist who literally did over 70,000 exorcisms, deliverances, um, and all prayers of that sort where he casted out some demonic negativity in some sense. 70,000. He was an expert. And he tells many of his stories and shares the power of God. He says our country is too obsessed with the power of darkness, the power of demons, the horror movies, like the movie The Exorcist, make the demonic seem way too strong compared to Jesus. And in fact, at the movie The Exorcist, at the end, they couldn't even cast out the demon. And the demon entered the priest. The priest jumped out a window and killed himself. And that whole thing was just false. We have a whole video on this in our video on the occult. We, have, we talk about this story. Um, the, the real priest actually did cast out the demon in the end. And it is a true story on the movie The Exorcist. But that boy was delivered by the power of God because Jesus is more powerful. Look at Mark chapter 5 in the Bible. It says that Jesus went to cure this man who was full of demons. And when the demons saw him, they ran and fell before Jesus and started begging him because all the demons of hell tremble before one man, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords, who is above all. Now, when I saw the exorcist for the first time, I was freaked out. And I was like, if the priest can't cast him out, how, how's it? if I get possessed, how am I going to get free? Uh, if a priest can't free us from the devil, then what's going to happen? And I didn't realize that the end of that movie was just fake, and it was Hollywood, and they really did cast out the demon. But I slept with rosaries on me and crosses on me for like a week. I slept with the lights on, music on. Like I was just freaked out, and it's because... I knew of God, but I didn't know God at this time. I didn't know Jesus. Jesus hadn't changed my life yet. I hadn't experienced his power and his, his light and his peace and his joy and his goodness and his freedom and his heavenly awesomeness. And that would be a few years later when I went away to college. And even then I met an exorcist at my college and he freaked me out and I wouldn't talk to him because he was an exorcist. And I remember he said, does anyone need prayer? And nobody was going. And I don't know why, maybe he sensed that I was freaked out by him, but he went around the circle and he pushed me into the circle. <laughs> and he says, you need prayer. <laughs> I said, okay. And he started praying over me and him and I ended up having this relationship and he ended up teaching me how to pray over people. He ended up teaching me about uh, deliverance and the dark side and how to really work with that sort of, that side of ministry. And it came in handy many times because I ended up doing ministry myself and praying with kids who needed it and praying with kids who were dabbling in things they shouldn't be dabbling in. And another story I remember is I was kind of in a, a disagreement with my girlfriend and something weird happened. She just stopped talking to me. She went into the, her room. She laid on her bed and she closed the door. I was like, that's weird. That's never happened before. Like, why aren't we talking about our problems? And this is one of my former girlfriends. And so I went into the room and I said, hey, what's wrong? She wouldn't answer me. And I said, hey, I thought we were talking and having a conversation. She said, mm. and I said, what's wrong? Again, I don't know why I got this discernment of spirits. And I said, 
are you being attacked by a demon? I don't know why I said that, but at the moment, that's what I felt. And all of a sudden, she said, oh, she started freaking out like she couldn't talk. And But she started moaning like wildly when I asked her that. And so I went over there. I was like, what the heck? So I went over to her windowsill and got holy water, and I started putting it on her. And I started praying one of the deliverance prayers that that exorcist priest taught me. And as soon as I finished the prayer, she said, oh. And she like gasped for breath and she started like, <gasps> like breathing really heavy. And she turned over and she told me that this demon was like strangling her and she couldn't talk. She couldn't breathe. And she was just bar barely even able to moan and get out that. And it was like the weirdest thing. Like I had never even experienced that before. And quite frankly, it was a little bit freaky. But once I prayed over her, whoom, gone, totally gone, which was amazing because that is the power of God and for those who believe. And I know some of my friends have struggled with demons and they just say the St. Michael prayer, even though they're scared to death, that they can utter the St. Michael prayer, the demon leaves immediately. And I know saints like Padre Pio, St. Gemma Galgani, and others who have been attacked by the devil like every day of their life. I mean, the devil comes in and messes up their room and throws things and breaks things and even physically attacks them sometimes. And Padre Pio was so close to Jesus that he didn't even care. He was willing to suffer out of love for him. Jesus was attacked by the devil. He was killed by the devil. The devil used his own people against him to crucify him. And yet Jesus conquered the devil. He conquered sin. He conquered all of hell. The devil gave Jesus his greatest... Uh, death blow, which was death itself. And Jesus took it and conquered it and obliterated it and annihilated it. That's what Jesus did when he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven in power and glory. That's why people like Padre Pio, even though he was allowed, God allowed him to be tested and attacked, he didn't even care. Sometimes when the devil came into his room, started breaking stuff, he's like, oh, it's you again. And then he'd just go back to reading his book. It didn't even phase him because he trusted God so completely. He knew the power of Jesus in him so completely. And I didn't always know that, but I've been learning that over the years, especially my early years, um, my college years and after, and I tell this, um, some of these stories in other videos where Jesus just helped me and delivered me from the power of darkness and gave me, even in the darkest times, the peace that goes beyond all understanding. And I remember after I had received a lot of these gifts and I went home, and I tell this story in my uh, video on the Eucharist. I remember I went home and I got attacked by the devil in a different way. It's called demonic obsession where he attacks your thoughts and he uses them against you and you just obsess over thoughts and he puts these these this thinking in your mind that you don't want there. These thoughts in your mind that you don't want there and it's almost like a cult. It's like you don't want them but you can't get rid of them. And I remember he put all of these disgusting thoughts in my mind. These sexual thoughts, all this stuff that I wasn't even thinking. I didn't even want there. And I was like, ew, why am I even, why is this in my mind? And this voice would come into my head and said, because you like it, because you're not of God. That's why you're thinking these things. And I'd be like, well, I don't want to think these things. And the voice would immediately say, well, you are, you are thinking these things. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to. Christ, you know, I don't want to think these things. Yes, but you are. If you didn't want to think them, you wouldn't, but you are. And then eventually over the next week, the these visions, these these thoughts he put in my mind were just so much deeper and darker and more disgusting. And I was thinking of these disgusting things with holy people and even with Jesus. Like, the devil has no <laughs> lines that he's not willing to cross to make something good, true, and beautiful, disgusting, perverted, and evil. And that's what he does. And so I remember going to bed every night, like pulling my hair out, just like, I'm not thinking these. God, you know I'm not thinking these. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But I don't don't want to. Okay, maybe they're in my head, but I don't want to think these. Well, if you didn't, you wouldn't be thinking them, but you are. These are your thoughts. They're coming from you. Okay, God, well, maybe deliver me them. Well, you don't want them delivered, the voice would say, because they're in your mind. You want them. You like them. No, I don't. I don't like them. I hate them. No. And so I literally, I would just like go through. It was hell. It's hell in your mind. It's different than demonic oppression, which is hell in your body where the devil attacks your body in some way, or demonic manifestations where he infests some object in your room, like a pillow or a picture or something else, or, you know, something that people think are ghosts. Or, you know, there's different varieties of demonic 
um, negativities, all the way from just sin, all the way up to oppression, obsession, and all the way up to demonic possession. And so we have a whole video on the five levels of demonic attacks. If you're interested in that, if we remember, we will link it here or below. But the bottom line is I was getting it attacked mentally. It was pounding on me mentally. And it was like evil in my mind. I don't even know how it got there except for the fact that he hated the fact that I was going to Jesus, that I had just had a huge conversion, that I had given my life to Christ. I gave everything to him and I was never going back to the way I was living. And yet he said, really? I'm going to make sure you do. And so he gave this all out assault of hell on me and my mind and my weakness there because of the torture I had from earlier past experiences in my life. And so after a week of this, I remember going to bed playing video games and literally till I couldn't even see anymore, until I couldn't blink. And then I'd run, jump in bed before I could even think and fall asleep. So I'd be falling asleep at three or four in the morning, just trying to like stay awake. So I didn't have to think of these thoughts, distracting me with TV and video games and things like that. And then after a week of this, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I yelled out to God and I said, God, what are you doing? You said you wouldn't give us anything that we couldn't handle. Well, this is far more than I can handle, God. I've been dealing with this a week. It's far more than I can handle. I can't take it anymore. I'm literally yelling at him up into heaven. And I said, I can't take it anymore. Deliver me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me. I was literally just like crying out for help. And that night when I went to sleep, I had this life-changing dream, supernatural dream that gave me an exorcism overnight. And most people who come to me uh, who say, hey, do you think this dream was supernatural? No. Do you think this dream? No. Like the majority, 99% of all dreams, not supernatural. Might happen once or twice in your life. But this was one time that it was supernatural and confirmed by all supernatural experiences. And I remember I went to bed and I had this dream where I was in a library and a priest came up to me and he asked me if I had my rosary on me. And I said, that's a strange question. Yeah, I always have my rosary. And I looked down and I didn't have it for the first time in like ever. And he said, oh, you don't have your rosary? Good. And all of a sudden he got evil. And all of a sudden all the curtains in the library closed except for one. And everything in the world around me got dark, pitch black, dark, just like my mind had been for a week, complete pitch black. And I remember there, everything in the universe was pitch black except for one little ray of light in the universe. And I was like so afraid. I started running and trying to hide and <laughs> look for like ways out of the library. And all of a sudden when the darkness was at its peak, I just fell down on my knees and started praying just like I did before I fell asleep. I said, Jesus, please deliver me. Help me, Jesus, help me. And at that moment, that little piece of light that I could see in the darkness shot out. This ray of light just shot out really far and really bright. And at the end of that ray, there was something. And as I looked deeper, I, it was a box. And I was like, that's weird. And as the box got bigger and bigger, I realized it was a tabernacle and it was glowing with light. And at the, the, the doors of the tabernacle both opened and something shot out of the tabernacle. And it was a Eucharist. And I saw the round Eucharist. And right when it stopped moving, it turned into like a sun where rays came off of it and exploded with light. And every ray that came off of that Eucharist and shot light out, at the end of each one of those rays, well, this is another Eucharist. And at the end of each one of those hundreds of Eucharists, they all exploded at once and they shot out their own rays and those had more Eucharists with more rays and eventually filled up my entire uh, night supernatural dream with complete light, like peace beyond all understanding. Like I was soaked in light, bathed in light. Even when I woke up, I felt like completely and totally exercised, delivered uh, from all darkness, from all evil. And I have never been attacked in that way ever again, the same way. Never. Like it was so powerful. It completely delivered me. And the next night I was waiting for it and nothing. I just had peace and joy and light and radiance from Jesus Christ, the Lord, who is King, who is Lord, who always wins, who has the victory. As one pastor said, if you look at the book of Revelation and you see what happens at the end, we win. No matter how much darkness kicks and screams and tries and yells and attacks, we win. Jesus wins. He's the Lord of all, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and he 
wins. And that's why I want to share his goodness. This is what we should be celebrating in Halloween. Light, goodness, victory, heaven, Jesus, 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 the light of the world, not darkness, ghouls, goblins, ghosts, witches, and crap from hell. We should be celebrating Jesus, who is the light of the world, who is victorious, who has conquered all of hell by himself, because he is the Lord. He is God. He is infinite goodness, holiness, and eternity. And we should fall on our knees and worship him, love him, and give Give our lives to him again and again and again because he's not only the Lord, but he's our loving Savior. He's good. He loves us. He gives us everything and he's on our side. He is merciful, loving. So praise him, praise him, praise him. And thank you. Please share this video with everybody. Share the, with everyone this Halloween the goodness of God, the victory of God, and let him be praised. So thank you so much for watching and please help us make this video more popular by liking it. Leave a comment in the be below if you have a story you'd like to share. Uh, we would love to hear it about the victory of God. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to see the link below or leave it in the comment section below. If you would like me to come to your parish to give a talk, seminar, conference, keynote, your college, your confirmation retreat, whatever, check out our website, catholictruth.org. And if you would like to follow us on social media for daily inspiration, check that out as well down below. God bless you.